Laura. Hey, Colin. How you doing? I am. <laughs> uh, today I'm good. Okay. Today, today I'm good. It's, I don't know. How are you doing? <laughs> good. Okay. Good. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I'm j this whole week has been colored pretty strangely for me because uh, on Sunday, which is almost a week ago, I put away the groceries too hard. <laughs> <laughs> and then my back stopped working. Mm, so fun. that that that's that stunk. I did call out Monday because of it, and it was kind of embarrassing to tell my bosses, like, yeah, the shelf was a little lower than the <laughs> other shelf, and now I can't do work. So yeah. I don't know. That sort of tainted my week a bit. But all said, it's uh, I'm I'm doing pretty okay. Good work has been fine. I've been playing a lot of games, and I just did some editing today for something that I cannot wait to be released. How are you? How are you? Nice. You have arguably a lot more going on than I do. Not arguably. You have a lot more going on than I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> I do have that. Um, so I am a high-risk pregnancy because of the diabetes. Uh, um, that kind of sounds like an action movie. High-risk pregnancy? A little bit. Like a bad action movie that <laughs> like a, you would like only ever... Bad very very slowly paced <laughs> yeah <laughs> you'd only find it in the five dollar bin at walmart and no <laughs> nowhere else um so basically what that means is that i live at various doctors uh, offices um also <laughs> so the good news is that i am out of my first trimester and into my second trimester and the main thing that that means is that i am not exhausted anymore yeah which is huge I, that's that's great yeah i feel like it, i feel like a person it's really nice i have a question yeah um so i'm raising my hand uh you, my question is <laughs> my question is you have always been a fairly tired person in general Agreed. are you ba are you back to the level of tired that you've always been or is this somehow less tired like the baby is supercharging hmm. you sorry the fetus uh, it's not a baby yet uh that's a good question i think <laughs> You look very awake yeah, and like alert. Yeah, I think I you might actually good. have a little bit more energy than I used to at this oh my moment. God. Oh that my will God. change. So Can't... I have three months of my life where I'll be like awake and alert more it's gonna than be normal. A good... So even though you're supposed to take it easy during pregnancy, this is the moment. This is where you get where everything done. Hard. Yeah, yeah. this is <laughs> where everything happens. Yeah. Every time you're like, I got a lot of shit on my plate. Charles, let's have another baby. In three months, <laughs> I'll be ready to go. Yeah, I really got to plan that out. Um but no, I so yeah, I've been I've been going to a lot of doctor's appointments. Um mm -hmm. and I just had two actual office visit appointments and one phone call today mm -hmm. uh that just wrapped up and so now we are recording. And one on Wednesday and then I had to get blood work done and I forgot cuz part of when I was planning all this was in first trimester and I was so tired that I didn't even open my mail for about a month and a half. Oh. So like I definitely didn't plan things out like get your blood work done. Yeah. Uh, Ouch. So I kind of had to make up for that by doing everything all at once. So I got blood work done two days in a row, and I have to do it again on like Monday Sh or Tuesday. Is that is that more They're blood? They're stealing than they should... all my blood. Yeah, that's. I, I feel like that's more blood than they should take from a woman who is bleeding for two. Question mark. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I have so many things to say about that. <laughs> One of which being. At least I'm not bleeding once a month, so like I have more blood than that's, normal. Okay, that's <laughs> I guess. Okay, I guess that's fair. Also, when you're pregnant, you you like double the volume of your blood, which is weird and fucked up. Yeah, and you're part bleeding of why you for two. Why it like okay. stays inside? I'm not like bleeding for two. I have blood for two, uh, which means that Charles, I have like more to spare. I don't know. Charles, I got one cut. Give me two band aids. <laughs> this is life for my three months of energy. True. Uh, but yeah, no, I. I I'm feeling pretty good. I am very, very proud of myself. So um, obviously, like the diabetes causes some problems if it's not well controlled during pregnancy. Like if your blood sugar is mm -hmm. too high, then your baby gets bigger. And that is not usually a good thing. <laughs> I was about to say, like, I've seen so many sci-fi movies about super soldiers, and I'm like, there's an answer right here. <laughs> um. So your basic like test of how well you're doing uh, with mm -hmm. your blood sugar over a three month period is called your A1C. And I've always been very well controlled, um, but my A1C is 5.1, which, hold on, I'm going to pull up a scale for you right now. Okay. <laughs> A1C chart. Yes, that is what I want. Thank you very much. No, that was not what I wanted. I lied. <laughs> Didn't help me at all. 
Um, so an A1C below 5.7 is considered normal. Okay. So my blood sugar is so well controlled that it is the same as a non-diabetic right now. Hey. Which is fucking bomb. I'm doing a good job. That's no, that's very good. And my prize for that was that I went and got Wendy's for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're kind of adopting my sort of reward structure, <laughs> which has been problematic this week. Rebecca took a picture of me sitting down playing the piano, and I was not a fan of how I looked in profile mm. um, because for the last week or so, I have not been able to do real cardio, yeah, uh, like at all, uh, and I'm sitting around a lot more. So I don't know could be better yeah yeah how I mean, how is how is it that like you are going through one of the most like notoriously if not difficult then demanding of attention and other resources processes a person can go through and it's belabored for many months and you're just sitting over there looking like happier than i've ever seen you <laughs> you got more energy you're fine and i'm over here like oh this it's 16 ounce <laughs> bottle just too much <laughs> I hear second trimester is like the golden time. Third trimester oh. is going to get worse. So like okay. it's really okay. only a short period of time that this is going to happen, which means I have to see all my doctors now, which is not how that works. I definitely have to go see them more in my third <laughs> trimester. But I'm gonna like, can I just get like the birth right. doctor's like, visits out of the way now? Done now because I'm going to be too tired to do it later. Like um, your water's going to break and you'll be like, oh, don't worry. I already went to the doctor <laughs> for this. It's already fine. <laughs> Uh, we need to find a new place to live and pack and move and stuff. So wait, are you going to try to move before the baby is due? Yes, mostly ah. because our lease is up before the baby is due. Okay, that so. makes sense. Yeah, so that's going to be fun. Uh, we've been like pretty much my entire life these days is doctor appointments and going to look at apartments. Yep, I feel and that's that. That's like, and I work. And that's pretty much it. I said I feel that as an acknowledgement. I definitely, I'm not trying to say I understand <laughs> your particular, I'm just saying I've been in both of those places, maybe not at the same time. Yeah, I'm it's really s- fun at the same time, let me tell you. I, yeah, no, that I don't feel that. My amount say. of personal time is like, mm. I'm making a very small hand gesture, <laughs> but you, you can't see that because the recording. Yeah. So I did see it, and it wasn't even that small. It kind of looked like you were hold. you could have held like four eggs in that hand <laughs> gesture. I so that's funny because I could barely hold like one and a half eggs per hand, so like maximum meant, three eggs. I know that I I know that I just brought up the egg as a measurement, but what the <laughs> fuck is the one and a half egg per hand? I can't comfortably hold two I eggs can't. in one hand. <laughs> I can hold one and, and some. So Man, like the do. baby's going to be a real challenge for you, isn't it? <laughs> I'll give it to Charles. Charles can hold the baby. I'll do everything else. I'll make him like carry it around. <laughs> I feel like you're going to have to go to a class where you have to do like geometric diagrams of the baby. Like these are the, sp- your hands are only big enough for these two spots. Anywhere else, Not it's so done. Yeah. This is a four egg baby. We can't, <laughs> we can't risk it. Well, I'll mm. get one of those things that like you wrap around and you like basically tie your baby to your body. That way it's hands free. Yeah. Um, what's it called? Rope? No. No. <laughs> Papoose? That's not what so- I'm thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It has a name. Uh, I mm. I'm not enough pregnant to know what it is yet though. That's that's fair. <laughs> I like that. Uh my personal time has actually uh it's it's sort of gone up a bit recently. At the beginning of the month I had like a lot of podcast stuff to do all at once. I was doing the soundtrack for Dice Populi, which just went up on Apple Music like 30 hey, minutes ago. Nice. So, so that feels cool that I'm a person you can find on there. Um, and then like this show and CGP, and I did two episodes of CGP this month. So it was just like really tight. And then I got my free time and then I put away the groceries and then I had even more free time. Um, <laughs> and it's just been, it's felt really good. I felt, I think injury notwithstanding i think i've felt like more relaxed in the last two weeks than i've felt in a while that's great um yeah no it's 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 really nice i'm uh, i've been putting a big priority on making sure that i have the time to do the things that i want to do yeah uh so like reading uh books i've read a lot of tolkien so far this year i'm maybe like a quarter of the way done with the fall of gondolin oh man i know so much I know so much, and I have this. I have. The, I think I figured out. This is gonna be very lofty, coming some from some fucking dude in upstate New York. But like, I think I figured out how to make the Silmarillion into movies and make it good. I think I know how to do that. Okay, but Are you going I'm pretty. To? <laughs> well, I here's the thing. Uh, the Tolkien estate. 
uh, has not sold the rights to anything post Lord of the Rings, the film mm-hmm. rights, and they probably never will because J.R.R. Tolkien himself sold them in the 60s, sold the rights in the 60s. So he's like, oh, that's a good idea. And then, you know, he passed. And a couple decades later, after the animated films, the Peter Jackson Lord of the Rings came out. And to quote Christopher Tolkien, uh, who just passed away uh, about a month ago yeah. at age 95, uh, to quote him, the movies eviscerated the books. They turned them into action movies for 15 to 25 year olds. So I really doubt <laughs> they would they would ever actually sell those rights. Yeah. But I'm so just like, I was struck, like, I don't know. It came into, there, there's a trilogy of books, trilogy quote, um, Children of Hurin, Baron and Luthien, and Fall of Gondolin. They all take place first stage, way, 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 way before Lord of the Rings. Uh, you should read Children of, everyone who's listening should read Children of Hurin. It is a, just a great novel, start to finish. I loved it. And it's, like, shorter than The Hobbit, shorter than Lord of the Rings, but it is, like, it is adult Hobbit. It is, mm. it is very, it's very dark and crazy and fun. Baron and Luthien and Fall of Gondolin, basically what Christopher Tolkien did was he was like, so I've cataloged everything my dad did. So before I die, R.I.P., I'm going to put these into books, but he didn't change anything. He just literally put mm. all the different extracts in order. So some are from like 1917, some are from 1930, some are from yeah. 1950. So it's they're not really novels. Interesting. Like if you're not if you're looking to sit and read a novel, I wouldn't recommend Baron and Luthien and Fall of Gondolin. But if you're looking to like learn about the stories, right. they're very good stories. And basically the way the Silmarillion here's here's how it works. Here's here's the structure. All right. I know I just did a lot of build up. You know how in the Lord of the Rings movies, for the first 10 or 15 minutes, Galadriel is just, like, giving you all the backstory of Sauron. Like, yeah. it, like she gives a tremendous amount of backstory. Yeah. Like, I think that that is the only reason those movies work, is they were able to put all that context into 10 minutes. So what you do is... You put the creation of the world in that 10 minute fucking intro. And I wrote one that's eight and a half minutes because I got bored at work. <laughs> if you can get that, then the books, Baron and Luthi and Children of Hurin and Fall of Gondolin, fucking trilogy right there. That's it. Having not read any of those, I just have to take your word for it. Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm just, it's, it's. Oh, but I'm glad it, you're excited about it. Also, you've been texting me like I'm. I'm very excited, almost exclusively about the these things that you're reading, and you're very excited about it. And I feel kind of bad that I can't really participate. And all I do is I'm like, cool. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm glad you're I, doing uh, it. Yeah, I I can't get them out of my head. The the books are phenomenal. Yeah. Um, so I've been having a lot of fun with it. Other than that, I've been playing games. Nice. That's good. Yeah. Um, one thing that I should uh bring us back to from two episodes ago uh, Mm -hmm. was that we were going to read the Sawbones book and then talk about it a little bit. Yeah. I did read half of it and it's been a while and (laughs) because like you know I've been a little busy but I have been really enjoying it and it is a a really easy quick read. Uh, The erectile dysfunction section has so far been my favorite. The erectile dysfunction section was a lot of fun. I actually found the spontaneous combustion thing to be informative. Yeah. Because the only reason we called it spontaneous combustion is nobody saw it happen. Right. And they saw burned bodies and they were like, oh, I guess it just. It just happened. It, that's just it. That's it. It's done. Uh, here, I have the book in front of me. I'm looking through the. Oh, man. I, I read the poop part. Oh. Have you read the poop part? Yeah, I read the poop part. Oh, man. Where how apparently it was a thing in medical history where people would just drink different kinds of shit. Yep. And prescribe different kinds of shit to each other. Yep. And like water it down and chug it. And I read that to uh, Rebecca and I think she hates me now. Yeah. <laughs> I read it out loud. It's it's hard. I was gagging reading it. Like yeah, it's it just, was... it's, it's a very... They're careful to keep the language pretty light and gross, and they even they give a trick. They give like a little trigger warning for it. Yeah. Um, yeah. The rest of the book is just as fun. It's really it's no, a delightful. I'm, I'm read. excited about finishing it. Um, I have been. I was reading it while I was going to sleep, though, so I was like reading all these like gross things and be like, okay, I'm gonna go to sleep now. <laughs> so that's been fun. Uh, um, yeah. I. It, it's kind of making me want to read a little more non-fiction, honestly, because mm-hmm. I'm going through all these Tolkien books. Um, I already have some stuff I'm going to read after, but it's still, I'm, since I've gotten back into reading over the last couple of years, I've been reading like exclusively fiction. Yeah. And this it's was good fun. to break out every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. This was a fun little thing. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I don't know how to find nonfiction books that I know I will be interested by. I did. I guess the one nonfiction thing I've read was "You Are Not So Smart," 
which mm. is a, psych- a book about psychology stuff. Um, have but you like, tried going to your local library? Uh, I haven't, actually. Fun fact, since moving to Albany like five years ago, I couldn't tell you where my local library is. I don't know. Ooh, can I tell you where your local library is? I definitely had Maybe. a library card. When I was in Albany. Oh, I I haven't had a library card since I was five years old and very excited to get uh, a library card. You gotta go to the library, man. Yeah, I Just don't know. Give it like, a shot. It's well. He, here's the here's the thing. I'm not a very fast reader. I have some attention issues with reading, where I will zone out and read the same paragraph five times over without realizing I've done that. So, like, sometimes I can really cruise, and sometimes it's just like, nope, it's not happening today. Yeah, but at least that gives you an idea of if it's a book you're going to cruise through or not. And you can also always extend your uh, borrowing. What I'm saying, though, is the amount of time it would take me to, like, go down to the library, find a book, and then see if I want to read it. Like, there, there are so many more, like, steps to resolution than if I just, like, get samples of books off of iBooks. Like, going to the library is not going to be a good discovery process for me because I'm just, I'm going to be just swiping through. I'm going to, swiping, Jesus, walking <laughs> with swiping my feet. Swiping with my feet, one after <laughs> the other. <laughs> um, no, I, like, I, I, I obviously understand the value of uh, of such places. Listen, I'm but just saying, if you haven't been since you were five, give it a shot. I've been since I was five, but like I haven't been excited. I don't believe you. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> well, you seem to forget. I was homeschooled. So before yeah. I had friends, I had books. Right. Mm-hmm. I That's went to important. Walter School. It's the same thing. <laughs> so, uh, no, I had like... Do, do you know those uh, Pizza Hut has those reading awards? You ever see those? Uh, so uh, the only reason I've ever heard of that is that weren't they giving away like a free pizza to whoever gave birth to twins after the first kickoff? I don't know. This is some Bim what Bam episode. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I don't was, know. Oh, is that like a Munch Squad or something? Yeah, it was a Munch what Squad where, f- like, I guess I do remember that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a year, Jesus! Is years worth of pizza for the first okay. twin well, delivery? Anyway, as, so, as sure. far as I can tell, you're not pregnant with twins, so that doesn't matter. No, um, also what? nowhere near the Super Bowl. <laughs> No, that's true. Um, no, Pizza Hut, like when I was a kid, and I'm sure they, st- I, I bet they still do it, is like you, if you track how many books you read as a kid, you can like get rewards for them and eventually get like a personal pan pizza and like a medal or a ribbon or something. So I had like awards from Pizza Hut uh, for all my book reading. And again, this this was before I had friends. It's not to say you can't have both. I'm sure you can have both, but I didn't, and those medals were my friends. <laughs> so I I enjoyed the library very much for a long time. It's just I, I hate going grocery shopping for the same reason. If I don't know what I'm going to get, it's just a real disaster. It's a real <laughs> disoriented mess, and I'm going to walk out with a lot of things I don't need and time I could have spent elsewhere. I just think it, you have so many thoughts. I do. It's fine. <laughs> so I forget sometimes that you you have a little bit of a thing where you can't you you have a hard time letting go sometimes. And I think that's one of those instances like there's nothing wrong with going and spending like an hour at the library and picking up like 17 books and even even if you read none yeah. of them. See, the tricky thing is I have other things I want to do. So right. every hour I spend doing something else costs me something. Uh like I have games I want to play. Uh, I have uh, like podcasts I want to work on, shows I want to watch. Like everything is kind of in competition a little bit, and I'm getting better about making sure I have time to like. Like I told you, I think last, I think I told you last recording that like I've just been napping more. Yeah, you did. Um, which oh man, I keep texting you about this. I bought a sleep mask. Yeah, and this thing is fucking magical. Nice. This is a Manta sleep mask. Fucking plug. I don't care. They deserve it. Uh, it's got like these little cups that have like this really nifty Velcro. It's not just Velcro. It is niftier than regular Velcro. I promise. <laughs> um, and it the the cups are very soft, so they just go on your eyes. They totally black out. And every time I put them on, it's kind of the same experience. It's like, all right, everything's totally black, but I am not tired at all. So I'm just going to sit here and like a few minutes pass and I think, Jesus, this doesn't work. I'm never going to fall asleep. And then I wake up and say, what the hell just happened? <laughs> like, I de- usually I have a pretty good idea of when I fall asleep. Like if you're watching a show or listening to something or right. what, like you, ha- you have a point of reference for falling asleep, but this just cuts it out of my brain. 
I don't know what the effect is, but I just I don't know when I fell asleep ever. It's a portal. anymore. I just yes, it just it's it sucks me in, and I I'm it's very good um, for when I get home and it's light and I like I have a migraine and it mm. just it pff, knocks me out. I'll get like a thirty minute nap in uh, when I get the chance. Nice. But like accepting those moments, uh, besides those moments, I don't, I get, yeah, everything else is sort of a balance. If I need yeah. to, if I need to not be consuming things, then I just don't do it. I'll put on the mask. I'll take a nap. I'll lay down. I'll go for a walk, whatever. But if, if, if I'm spending an hour at the library, just looking for a book, I would rather spend that time reading a book. And, and I'm fortunate enough to have like friends who can recommend things and and i mean online book yeah. uh stores make there it pretty resources, easy yeah. yeah it's like like i <clears throat> going to the grocery store and staring at the food hoping that a meal will form in my brain <laughs> is less effective than making a list and going and getting it yeah like if the library is where is the only place i can get a book fuck yeah but i i guess i'd have a hard time just going and looking around i'd probably need someone like you to just like every time that i start to like inch toward the door you slap my hand and say get the fuck over here <laughs> i really need to be kept on rails and then get yelled at by the librarians yeah shh shh too loud, shh, shh, too loud. we yeah. can't we we can't talk loud on this podcast right. we're gonna pivot into asmr Hold on, let me get real close so you can like hear the spit in between my letters. That's that's something about ASMR that like I understand like the soft sounds, I understand like different textures. I don't understand the incredibly detailed spit recordings. Like you're making me incredibly self-conscious about how close I am to my mic and every time I swallow I'm like, "Oh no, what's happening now?" <laughs> Listen, as the editor, I can tell you that's not a thing that you and I really have to deal with, but okay. like it is it is an artifact of ASMR stuff that I don't fully understand is like I'm into it if you get that little dentist vacuum and get all that right. shit out beforehand <laughs> but the second I know how many strings of spit are in between your teeth without looking Ugh. you need to stop you need to stop I don't get it yeah you're making it's, it sound really unappealing <laughs> It's, I mean, just, I don't know if people just don't think about it or they brush it out of their mind, but maybe it's just because I edit so much audio, but man, I'm extremely aware of it yeah. and it's, it's bad. It's a bad thing. Yikes. I don't know where to go next with this conversation. Um, I'm going to just hip hop it over to something totally different. Speaking of spending time though, um, <laughs> Charles and I went to a really fun little like comic book, um, Magic the Gathering store. Nice. Close yep. to where we live, mm -hmm. um, because he wanted to get a couple of things. Also, he's been doing his Pokemon card. He's like been putting it into a binder and like making like you know estimating how much all of his cards are worth and all that stuff. So he's yep. been having a really fun time with that. Mm -hmm. um, but we bought this really fun game called Spirit Island, which we mm -hmm. played, uh, which is a co-op game for I think two to four or maybe more than that, but definitely two. Um, where there's your your spirits of this little island that's being invaded by uh outsiders basically and mm -hmm. like they're trying to create cities and towns and they're kind of taking over and they're blighting the land and you as the spirits are trying to scare them away mm -hmm. um and it's super fun and we played like four we sat down and we played one day we basically just played for seven hours and we played like <laughs> five different rounds and the first four times we lost we kept me like how are you supposed to win this game and then we were reading like strategies and stuff online because we were like this doesn't make any sense and people were like, oh, this game's really easy. We we're like, uh, we have to be doing something wrong. <laughs> and we found out that one of the major rules, like you can reclaim your card from your discard pile because you don't have a very big hand. Mm -hmm. And we'd been playing it where when you do that, you reclaim one card. And the rule is you reclaim all your cards, which is like what? a huge difference. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, and so then we finally played playing the correct way and we just barely won. But it's really, really fun. So if you're looking for a good board game, Spirit Island. That's very cool. Yeah, yeah. I. That's something. Something I've been bad about lately, and want to get better at is I haven't been quite as social. I haven't mm. been like getting together with people and doing things aside from like Dice Populi recordings and stuff. Um, but that kind of stuff is is great. And now so many of us, uh, like from our old D and D group, like so many of us live close to each other. That's the kind of shit yeah. we should be doing. Like get yeah. your betrayal, get your pandemic. So that'd be a good idea. I should That'd put some fun. effort into that you and should. report and report back. Um, I oh I remember that actually reminds me of um, I'm sure you know the board game Pandemic. Yes. Um, oh, fun fact! I don't remember where I saw this headline, but I guess 
during the COVID-19 outbreak that's happening in Wuhan, mm -hmm. um, the, in China, apparently the game Plague Inc., which is about spreading diseases throughout the world, yeah. has been taken down from online stores yeah. in China <laughs> during the outbreak, because I guess that's how you keep that under control. Uh, um, yeah, anyway. I heard they had to put out like a thing being like, this is not based in reality. This is yeah. not how you should assume this is going to go. <laughs> But uh, but pandemic, the game where diseases are spreading and you need to contain them, um, the like the deck, you adjust the difficulty by how many epidemics you yeah. put into the card stack. And we bought an expansion so that you got extra epidemic cards and the virulent strain cards. Mm. So these are epidemics with bonus features, with yeah. perks that make it even harder to win the game. And I think in this, I think it was all in the same day. We were playing a game with this new expansion, expecting it to be way harder. And we get really far into the game, and nothing bad has happened yet. Something and Jeff keep, and and Jeff keeps saying, "Colin, you fucked up." I'm like, "No, dude, I know exactly what I'm doing. I didn't put a single epidemic card in there." <laughs> So basically nothing happened. We were just sort of like looking at cities oh my God. on the map. And then I was like, well, what would happen? What just what you happen? <laughs> what if there were epidemics? What's happening? What happened if there were epidemics? <laughs> what would happen? <laughs> so I said, what would happen if we did all the epidemic cards, including the new expansion of virulent strain cards? Let me guess. Uh, lost in one round. Yeah, I was about to say, absolute first, death. <laughs> first round, the entire globe got covered. Oh, brutal. In these little disease cubes. But that shit is so fun. That yeah. was, that would be such a fun thing to do. I would. I remember just like cranking the Halo Five soundtrack and just six of us yeah. losing repeatedly. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Charles and I started the Pandemic Legacy Season 1 a long time ago, mm -hmm. and we keep on meaning to pick it back up, but it's been so long that like I don't we don't really remember everything that was going on. Yeah. But it's fun, man. Also, very proud. Charles' dad came over for dinner the other night, and we played Trivial Pursuit, and I won. Hey. Yeah. Very good. Was it any special like version of Trivial Pursuit? Classic edition. Very good. Classic I'm came out. The, this was updated in 2016, so like, you know newer information but yeah i i i am very often either remarked upon or chided for how much stupid information i put out in conversations <laughs> but i am actually extremely bad at trivia games <laughs> <laughs> so i sort of just steer clear of them like watching jeopardy is oh, an exercise in humiliating it is, it is humiliating i i don't i don't i don't think i've ever watched jeopardy and like gotten well, more than one question right. right per episode. I wouldn't necessarily say I like get a lot of them right. I just really like watching. I think I don't like watching because I just feel so stupid. <laughs> I'm like, there's like a hundred questions and I don't know one of them. That's yeah. bad odds. That's bad grade. Um, oh, man. But speaking of diseases and bad things like that. Uh, so because last week tonight with John Oliver came back, I was like, mm. you know what? I should just get HBO because I keep not getting it because it's one of the more expensive subscription services. Yeah. So I signed up for it and I was just like, oh, wait, there's like a lot of shit on HBO there that I should actually, be watching. Yeah. I was like, oh, man. So I watched Chernobyl. I have not watched Chernobyl yet, but I hear amazing things. <sighs> highly. Yeah. Highly recommend. I was like captured from the first first five minutes. I was just so on board for the whole thing. I, Rebecca watched it separately from me and she's like, I don't get it. I already know what happens. And I'm like, that's not yeah. that's not the point. It's yeah. seeing it happen. She's like, yeah, but I know what happens. And I'm like, can you just not enjoy historical fiction? She's like, not if I know what happens. <laughs> I'm just like, I feel so sad. I feel so sad for yeah. you. She should um, not but, listen to Switchblade Sisters then. Okay. Is it, <laughs> it's is a that, podcast about movies, but their whole tagline is not, it's not about what happens, but how it happens. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's probably not uh probably not something she would uh get a lot of enrichment from but i loved it and as i was looking for games to play i'd hit a point on my xbox where all the games i was playing i was like witcher 3 is great but i don't want to play it like mm. i'm not driven yeah and um right around the time i started watching chernobyl uh, uh the last expansion for metro exodus came out which is a series of games set in russia after a nuclear holocaust <laughs> And it's just basically a survival shooter series. Yeah. Uh, so now I've been going through and playing through those again. And nice. they're just, they're so good. Like, in the same way that I could probably play the Halo games mm. forever, uh, I think these are on that list wow. of games that I can just kind of go through again. Uh, 
though I would always get the first two mixed up, and I realized that's because I've played the first game five times, and I just looked at my achievements. I haven't beaten the second game since, like, 2014, so Damn. I'm going through the game again in, like, whole sections I don't remember, and having just watched Chernobyl when my character starts gasping for air because yeah. my gas mask goes out, I'm just imagining the people with radiation poisoning in the hospital, like, <gasps> and it's really... I don't know. It's yeah. it's it's a good it's a good experience. Nice. This is what I'm doing instead of going to the library. <laughs> I'm, I'm torturing myself with vivid imaginations that of perfect <laughs> of dying in Russia thanks to <laughs> nuclear catastrophe. Um, but no, yeah, Sounds HBO's fun. been a lot of fun. Good. Um, yeah, I watched the Golden Compass or his Dark Materials and really enjoyed it. Wait, is his Dark Materials related to the Golden Compass? Sure is. Uh, his what? Dark Materials is the trilogy that the Golden Compass is the first book of. Oh, I was wondering why people... I've never heard of his Dark Materials, so I was wondering why everyone was talking about uh, this show, and I'm like, what? Yeah. Why is it getting so much attention? Because it's based on the Golden Compass. This makes a lot more sense. Yeah. I've also... I've never seen, nor have I read the Golden Compass, so I, yeah. I still have no familiarity, but... Uh, yeah. I haven't read them in a very long time, but they were one of my favorite series growing up, and... Like it just, I just really, really enjoyed it. And I have to say, like, I was having this conversation with uh, somebody else whose wife was watching it, and I guess his wife read the books, and he was like, "Oh, she keeps on saying about how much that changed it." And I was like, "Maybe, but like the, it's one of those books or series based on a book that there are details that are different, of course, because there's no way to do like a one to one mm -hmm. translation, but it feels so much like the book. Yeah, like really, yeah. really does." So, I don't know. If you have any interest, I, I enjoyed watching it. No, that makes sense. I also just yesterday finished Watchmen, um, mm. the HBO show. Um, and I read Watchmen a couple years ago. I didn't retain all the details, but uh, even though the Watchmen TV show is a sequel to that book, it is not an adaptation. It is... Oh, that's fun. It is like Watchmen 2. Right. Even though there is a sequel called Doomsday Clock, which I think just, just wrapped up two months ago. But um, that was another one of those things where, like, this is a different story. These are different yeah. characters. But holy shit, I'm getting such strong vibes. Uh, and the writer of Watchmen, the original book, hates all the adaptations. So he has no comment upon it and mm. just, like, doesn't want anything to do with it. But me having read it, seen the film, which I thought was a decent asset adaptation, and watching this, I was just like, I don't know how they wrote a whole new story that feels so in keeping with yeah. the original especially when it's a different medium a sequel yeah. in a different medium that feels that's a hard related that's hard it's a magic trick to make yeah that's great yeah um that's but yeah cool. so i guess i'll just rattle off what's the other stuff of watch picard, uh, obviously picard 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 i feel like maybe we should not go up. too deep into picard until you did yeah How, okay how'd you feel about last night's episode um uh, uh. It was very good. It was. I, I think it, it. it. I think it might be one of my favorites so far yeah. because it it addressed my complaints of, uh, and we're probably not going to get into spoilers here, but um, we might though. So just in case. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, this is uh, this is a series where each episode is very it's it's very serialized. It's very much chapters in a story, and I felt that even though it it has the room to really sink into these characters it i still felt it moved a little too breakneck mm. like we we weren't getting room to breathe when characters had big moments like we met yeah. elnor in episode four and in episodes four and five elnor is just like not really given right he was just kind of there yeah uh, and it's like it's a great performance and what was written was written well but like there wasn't enough of it this was the first episode episode six where I felt like the show took the amount of time it needed. Each scene was like very honed to what it was supposed to do. Uh, Soji realizing that she's not who she thinks she is. It's not a reveal to us. We know it from the pilot. Right. But it's still an affecting moment because they take the time exploring what it means to her character. Yeah, they really did a lot of in-depth like zoning in on every character's like flaw or whatever, like their, yep. their problem. In a really interesting way. Yeah. And and the thing is, as far as the writers go, th th it's the same writers writing this as the other episodes, but this is a director, because we had Hanalee Culpepper and Jonathan Frakes for the first five. Yeah. This is another director named Maha Vivoli, something like that. It's it's very it's very strangely right. spelled, like yeah. VRV something, but they did a a wonderful job. And I'm wondering, was it was it just that this script was spaced out better, or that this director made the choices 
to let these yeah. moments breathe, to take their time. Because I felt so much more connected to everyone yeah. this episode. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that's just because it took six episodes to get here. I think that's because this episode did it extremely well. Yeah, I agree. Especially with such a short season, it feels like they really mm-hmm. should have invested in the characters a little bit more at the beginning. But I mean, yeah. I'm not I'm not complaining. I've been really enjoying it so far. So mm-hmm. um Yeah, the I've I've so far heard two reviewers suggest that the end of this season is going to be the reveal that the Romulans created the Borg. Mm. That's like a prevailing theory. Yeah. Um, how would you feel if that's what happened? If if these two Titanic villains from the next generation from the 80s and 90s were linked in this way? Um, I, It depends on how they do it. I don't know. It's not, yeah. it's not a plot point that I'm like excited to see fulfilled. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense yeah um but you, i mean also you know me like i don't i don't generally yeah. like to spend too much time thinking about what could potentially happen in the future because like i just want to see what they have come up with mm-hmm. um i don't know i think that that would be interesting but i think that their insane like drive to destroy all synthetic life doesn't track with the time frame and doesn't track with that just being the borg like that yeah, doesn't make sense to me because the borg and synthetic life's life forms are completely different yeah yeah, no, that's a good point. I, on, from like a from a world standpoint, I guess I wouldn't care too much if they explained the Borg, however they explain it. Um, but I just hope that if they do try to explain the origins of the Borg, they don't just make it a one season of television thing. Yeah. I think it, I think it would have to be bigger than that. Yeah, like we're about to have like four or five different Star Trek shows over the next few years. If each show adds a piece to the Borg puzzle, That'd I think that that would be the scope. Yeah. That I think would be worthy of this. Otherwise, it's just like it would feel. It would feel a little bit like in Game of Thrones when all of a sudden Arya just comes out of nowhere and stabs the Night King, and like that's it. And there's like literally, no <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, something where it's like the not just you built up to this, so it needs to be it needs to pay off big, but like you have made such a complex thing right that to oversimplify it would feel cheap yes yeah yeah i i I think it's i don't know so i don't know but i i'm super enjoying uh star trek picard and i think it's i I think it's getting better as it goes along did you enjoy seven of nine's appearance uh i did um yeah i don't know i thought i thought it was really interesting i think it's her whole like revenge plot definitely made sense to me Mm -hmm. because she never I don't know like she never really felt like she had resolved whatever issues she had from being a board yeah because last last we saw her she was very like apprehensive about being around other humans yeah and this show kind of makes it seem like yeah that was a reasonable fear yep (laughs) Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I got to say, though, in this past episode, like, I loved Hugh. Yeah. I thought he, he was great. He felt so warm. Yeah. And at for, and, and for a little while, when oh, he and froze. Picard uh, were talking to each other, I was like, like, we only ever saw him in two or three episodes back in Next Gen. And here he's a different character. And when he's talking to Picard, I'm like, why does he seem so fake? And then I realized that on top of helping Picard, he was also like, maybe you could do me a political favor and yeah. get people to support what we're doing here. And I'm like, I like that. That felt... Yeah. It, it, I didn't expect there to be any dimensionality to his character. And it's just... And there there is. is, actually. Yeah. yeah. Surprising amount. Yeah. Yep. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I'm excited. Um, I'm excited to find out more. I've just been really enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah, it's been good. Um, this will not become a weekly Picard show. No. And by that, I mean <laughs> no. a monthly Picard show. Yeah. Really do I th- I th- yeah, I think uh, the show will be, a uh, season will be over by the time we uh, Ugh, that's so record cool. next, maybe. The season is too short. 10 episodes is not enough. Yeah. Give me give me those 26 episodes. Give me those 25, yeah. Yeah. Heel, yeah. Seriously. <laughs> Ah oh, man, how did like how did people ever make twenty six episodes in a season? Well, their budgets weren't nearly as big, that's for sure. I mean, it's the same thing because now common episode orders are thirteen. It's just cut in half. So right. like the math, the math is essentially just double the cost of the episodes, put half of them out there, and there you go. You got a prestige show now. And I'm just like, like looking back at Star Trek Deep Space Nine and they're like, oh, yeah, we'd work, you know, 14, 18 hours a day, six days a week <laughs> to put out 26 episodes a year. Yeah, that's it. I'm like, that's it? yeah, you could work harder. Ah, 
Yeah, that's hell. Just kidding. Don't do that. Yeah. That's too much. But yeah, I've been watching a, watching a lot of TV lately. Yeah. Um, and Altered Carbon just dropped, so I'm yeah, going to check that out. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Um, I'm also in kind of a weird phase where, like, obviously I'm not going to have a newborn for quite some time, but, mm-hmm. like, I kind of don't want to, like, start any new shows because there's going to be... Like, I get really, really great maternity leave, so I'm mm-hmm. not going to go back to work for a long time. So nice. I'm probably going to be watching a lot of TV. <laughs> and I don't want to, like... I don't want to go through it all now. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Um, I will well, then also here, be reading books and listening to podcasts and like you know going outside. But well, here, here's 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 the thing to do is with all this extra energy your baby has given you. <laughs> take this time to play games because once mm. the baby comes you will be too brain fried to really focus and drill down on a game probably a for significant amounts of time so and your yeah their spare time that you use for tv uh, get through that backlog yeah i am excited for ori and the will the wisps i Holy was about shit. to mention it oh yeah. oh man i'm, I'm so really i'm really pumped it was supposed to come out uh like two weeks ago but ori and the will of the wisp i already have it pre-installed on my xbox because nice. i have game pass so I, I didn't have to pre-order it and i'm just i it's it's what i'm it's what i want it's yeah. what i want the most yeah i i care about it maybe as much as i care about <laughs> star trek picard <laughs> wow. ori, in the blind, ori in the blind forest is one of my favorite games of all time yeah me too. i i put it ahead of almost everything else and I, I cried twice while I was playing, at least twice while I was playing Warrior in the Blind Forest. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Maybe I three think, or four times actually, because like, holy shit. I think I've beaten it like five or six times across like the various editions. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Uh, and it definitely gets me at least once a run through. Yeah. Like that intro scene is oh extraordinary. It is like up intro powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited. Also, so, Charles was sitting there reading reviews to me yesterday, and he was like, "Oh, they say it blows mm-hmm. Ori in the Blind Forest out of the water," and I was like. I don't believe that. That's what I've been seeing. I don't believe it until I play it. I don't know how you can improve upon like the perfect yeah. example of a specific genre and it's or subgenre and apparently it does but i i that's one of those things that i like can't like i will believe it when i see it and i will say i felt the exact same way about breath of the wild where i was like there's no way that it's as good as everyone's gonna say it is and then like (laughs) i definitely was like oh fuck yeah it actually is yeah so i'm hoping that i have that that turnaround but yeah me too fuck i'm really excited yeah because there are a ton of games coming out soon that i'm pumped for i think this year uh doom eternal comes yeah. out like a, a a week after ori in the blind forest i'm pretty excited for that did you play the 2016 doom and doom? animal crossing uh i did not charles did doom is not really my 2016 game. doom because i didn't I, I mean like obviously i was born after the original came out um i've played doom i've played marathon i've played those old wolfenstein yeah uh 3d you know first person shooters uh, and they're fun as for me as examples of what it was back then. And I'm sure it was groundbreaking then. Uh, somehow Doom 2016 took that idea, put it into a modern shooter and made it amazing. It yeah. doesn't feel antiquated. It is just fast and brutal and hilariously <laughs> fun. So I'm really excited for that. Other than that, Cyberpunk and Halo Infinite. Mm. And I, I think that's what I care about this year. Yeah. I Man. am most excited about Ori. Um, people are really excited about Animal Crossing. Yeah, they did. They had the Nintendo Direct. Yep. Um, people are like literally losing their minds about that. Um, I might, I might play it. I don't know. I just that's one of those games where I played Animal Crossing for a little while, but then when you don't log in, all of your town makes you feel guilty for not logging in, and uh, I just don't have time for that. <laughs> I don't, don't want to well, hey, feel but guilty. Now, now you do. Yeah. Well, maybe we're, we'll see. I have to find um, a place to live first, and then maybe I'll play some video games. Okay, that's fair. Just don't start playing Animal Crossing once you have a real baby, because then you have to choose Ooh. which one you take care of. Right. And we that know it's... A, that might be a hard decision. <laughs> or just babies are less immediately rewarding. <laughs> I don't know. There's uh, no achievement. Baby didn't bonk head today, but... Um, maybe I'll make that. I t- I'll, what I should do now is start making achievements for myself to give to myself just, in the future. <laughs> gamify your baby yeah i have like a whole bunch of like made it to 100 days (laughs) for a celebration (laughs) that could be very fun that could be a thing yeah each each time that you and i get on the mic to chat you just uh tell me which awards which awards have won you and as we We get further baby for the first time wait no that's not an award (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah and then like as we get more and more into it your uh your achievements will get more and more desperate and sad and you'll like (laughs) laugh your way through them i slept for three hours straight tonight (laughs) uh yeah i uh 
we'll see how this goes. I do not know how I'm going to do with a newborn. I really like to sleep. Yeah. And I'm not going to do that for a hot minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, uh, man. But I mean, hey, with with fantastic maternity leave, I'm very scared now because I've started saying something and whatever I say is going to be wrong. And I'm curious what the be... end of the sentence is. Well, I'm just like, how possible is it that obviously you're in hell when the baby is awake and screaming and doing stuff but instead of trying to make any Sorry. sleep schedule mm -hmm, mm -hmm. just like as soon as baby sleep you sleep as soon as baby sleep just like fucking yeah and that's that's it that's my it's plan okay yeah that's the plan and like everyone is always, like i know so many people that have had kids and they're like oh they say you're supposed to sleep and the baby sleeps but like i have to like do the dishes and like clean the house and like i'm gonna be like nah goo i gotta sleep now <laughs> That's what I'm saying is like, Charles don't can figure out the fucking dishes. Yeah. He needs to. yeah. Don't put fine. those other things ahead of your and the baby's well-being. Yeah. Like, like if this sleep. Yeah. The good news is that like my parents are retired. Charles dad is like super pumped. Like his mom, you know, she's feeling she had back surgery recently. So like if she's, you know, physically up to driving down here, like maybe our I should parents, be in touch with her. Yeah. Our parents are going to be around to help. And like my I know that if I just ask my parents like, hey, I need to nap if you could just like sweep the bedroom or whatever that'd be great like wait I you also have a <gasps> you have a Roomba just make sure you get a one story place that is something I actually thought about the other day um, yeah no, also that's, as I get more big. pregnant sometimes my uh, Dexcom will go off in the middle of the night and I have to go test my blood sugar to make sure it's not too low and I keep on leaving my testing hold, hold, hold on, hold on. I just edited an episode of Dice Populi, so I heard Dexcon, and I'm thinking of D&D &D stats. <laughs> what is this that you're talking about? I don't know. Dexcom ends in an M. Uh, it's, my, okay. <laughs> it's my glucose monitor, so it checks okay, my blood gotcha. sugar every five minutes, connects to my phone, alerts me if my blood sugar is too high or low or dropping or whatever. Gotcha. Um, but it alarms in the middle of the night if my blood sugar is too low. And I keep on mm -hmm. leaving my testing kit downstairs. And oh, so, like, no. I get up in the middle of the night. And I'm not really awake. And I walk downstairs. And this happened to me last night. And I was walking in the stairs. So I was like, I should live in a one floor apartment. <laughs> <laughs> This is dumb. I know I'm not going to remember to bring my testing kit up every night. Like, that's not going to be the solution. Nope. <laughs> definitely moving is definitely the option. Yep. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And then, uh, well, how on the scale of, of Roombas, because I know that there are like Roombas that are like two, three hundred bucks that do a good job. And then there's like the thousand dollar ones that like are basically your maid. Uh, where where on the scale of Roomba does your Roomba exist? Uh, not a maid, that's for sure. Okay. Uh, okay. So I think because I'm like three hundred dollars. I don't remember those. It, it was a wedding gift. Because is it a bad idea to look at the specs for your Roomba, the estimated coverage of square footage that it will clean, and say this is the size house I yeah. want? <laughs> uh, listen, I mean, you got to use the tools that are given to you, so it's not the worst idea. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to put in a lot of furniture to reduce the square right. footage <laughs> to what the Roomba can handle. I think the Roomba can handle a decent amount. Like, I think that's mm. not a problem. The biggest problem with our current apartment and the Roomba, first of all, it's multi-floor. So, like, yep. there's only so much they can do anyway. But we just have so much crap on the floor. Like, we have so many shoes that just take up the entire universe and, like, piles <laughs> of shit. And it's all really narrow so like there's only so much that it really does so it doesn't really seem that useful but if we have a bigger like floor plan yeah more square then yeah it'll be useful yes different slightly rhombusier right house <laughs> yeah uh, what's we'll wrong see. with me so it's uh, listen, we, we pray for almost an hour like you know it's now that's time true for i also <laughs> i also did just down chipotle right before i didn't want to oh. say it at the beginning because you know i was curious i just be repeating myself <laughs> but yesterday charlotte texted me that she got a notification that there's a new type of queso and the edit today i edited until one o'clock and i was like i haven't eaten yet mm. so uh so yeah nap time is is coming soon yeah but uh speaking of vacuums though i now have a cordless vacuum Ooh. Ooh. And it's very cool. And Rebecca's very smart. She has three batteries for it. So when one dies, you just switch it out. Like That's you're never nice. not fully charged up. Um, however, I also have three cats. <laughs> so One cat per battery pack makes sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Odo in particular sheds like a motherfucker. Mm. And I brushed them last week and apparently literally every piece of the vacuum that could be clogged was clogged. Oh no. <laughs> and this was after I took like as much hair off the ground as I could with my hands. Yeah. The rest destroyed the vacuum and she was like, you're cleaning it. Yep. So I just sat there for 20 minutes picking cat hair out of the vacuum. Yep. Um, but aside from that, uh, that's a, it's actually a pretty cool thing. Yeah. I just ne- I never realized everyone knows how annoying a vacuum cord is, but like to not have one, it was like the first time I put on AirPods for yeah. headphones. I was like, wow, this wire has really made my life <laughs> shit, huh? <laughs> yeah. Things were that really bad legit. until right now. <laughs> yeah. I don't vacuum very often because we have hardwood floors, so I just sweep. Yeah. That's a, that's a thing that, because Rebecca and I, we're considering... Uh, we're trying to figure out if uh, if we're going to move into a new place together mm. once our lease is up this year. We're just trying to figure out a lot of stuff. Um, we also have a friend who owns a house, and they might have to move. So we're trying to be like, hey, you want to? Can we rent that hey. shit, please? Because it's nice as fuck. But uh, she, had, I've never lived in a place with hardwood floors. So yeah, and she's and she's like, hey, uh, it'll be a really big uh, improvement for your allergies. And I was that like, is I never definitely true. I never thought of that, and maybe that's why my life sucks. Yeah. <laughs> is I've always yeah. been around carpet and had cats. I mean, carpet is great, but like not for that. You should probably try a hardwood floor. Yeah, I definitely should. What though? Hmm. Here's the thing: is you know how being cold is not good yes uh and as you know a, how as a cold when... yes i do know that <laughs> as a cold uh i'm a, i'm a hot myself uh i'm i'm a hot boy so when i if if i wake up and it's very cold that's bad right. it's difficult to get up it's difficult to be cold when you're not awake you can be awake or you can be cold am i doing that right i don't know what i just said never scratch it. i think no you just move forward get to the point i think is move forward towards the point yes um carpet warm floor usually yes. wood cold floor you know what solves that 100 percent of the time slippers yep <laughs> okay do you know how many pairs of slippers i own <laughs> are do you have like like mr rogers kind of every point of connection in your home you change into like a different robe instead of slippers i have one robe but okay yes i do i legitimately like just doing a quick count of the slippers that i can think of right now i have seven pairs of slippers that are just mine christ <laughs> that's a lot of slippers to be fair to be fair there was like, one christmas where everyone got really excited and all got me slippers and there were like five of them so i had two pairs of my own and then i got five pairs of slippers and i was like okay that's pretty good though like i i hate getting gifts a lot of the time because and I mean, it, it always happens, like, because Rebecca was like, uh, I told Rebecca, I just ordered myself a sleep mask. And she's like, that's what I was going to get you for Valentine's Day. <laughs> and that's the second time that's happened in the last couple of months. Yeah. Um, but if 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 somehow everybody manages to get you the one thing you want, I would gladly take like five yeah. of the thing. I wear like, every it, pair of them. I wouldn't take one of anything I don't want. But if people get it right, I'm like, just fucking pile it on, please. Yeah. I'm, yep. I'm fine with that. I did reach my maximum number of scarves that I can handle, which is good because then people stopped oh, no. giving me scarves. <laughs> okay, um, this is the next year with yeah. slippers. But yeah, no, it's I have like a couple pairs of the like solid uh, sole slippers and I have a bunch mm-hmm. of pairs that are like kind of soft, but they're like, you know, the little half socks, but they've got grippies on the bottom. Then I have a mm. couple pairs of the soft, really fluffy ones that go up a little bit more. They're just great. Okay. I have slippers yeah, for all could- occasions. Because you, you sort of answer my question, which is much like your insulin kit, like you're not going to bring it in your bedroom. We we accept that that's a fact and it's not going to happen. Right. So if I have cold floor, how keep warm foot if slippers on the other side of house? And the answer is slippers all over house all the time. Now, and yes. And now I have my answer. That is not the same <laughs> pair of slippers. Like I will wear one pair of slippers, drop them off in one location, switch slippers and then switch locations. <laughs> So at any given time, I have several pairs on both both floors of the house. I would love to see like the actual floor plan for how your slippers are are coordinated throughout (laughs) the apartment. It sounds a lot more organized than what I'm sure is actually happening. Oh, no. It's just slipper chaos. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah. I don't know. How expensive are heated floors? I think they're pretty expensive. (laughs) Mm-hmm. 
I would prefer that to slippers just because yeah, it's another same. thing. Another problem for me with slippers, <clears throat> and I'm going to be repeating myself here. I have three cats yeah. and all three of my cats like shoes. Well, and if I get, give them. Okay. So this is still solved by the having seven pairs of slippers. Because <laughs> then you still have four pairs for you at any given time. <laughs> What, I, what I'll have to do is, unlike you, I'll probably have to get, like, b- how in the early 1900s, shoes were not built for left and right feet. It was just shoe. Right. I'll have to get, like, 14 of one of, kind of one slipper. Kind of slipper yeah. So that no matter what my cats are doing, I have a pair. Right. Which mm, that could would work. look would look insane to someone <laughs> if they saw 14 identical shoes. So- where are you getting all these same shoes, Colin? <laughs> it's for the cats. Don't worry about it. <laughs> mm. Oh, boy. Yeah. All right. Is it nap time or what's going yeah, on? Yeah, I think it's nap time. <laughs> this is good. This, good. this has been an unusually upbeat episode. Yeah, man. Well, I mean, we are... the past three episodes that we've done, I've been pregnant and super tired. And so, like, I and feel And now you're pregnant like and you're super energized. Yeah, it feels which is... good. And I'm not sick this time. Past couple episodes I've been sick. No. That's been a, that's, yeah, that's been a bad streak of luck there. Yeah. Um, well, I actually, uh, when you mentioned that you were ready to record, I had just started folding my laundry. Oh. And I should probably take care of it because let me look. One of my cats is asleep <laughs> on my laundry. Yeah. Uh, so I'm probably going to have to rewash Makes some sense. of it. Uh, so oh, I'm going to go take care of that it has been a lovely very fun time talking yeah with you. agreed all right talk to you soon talk to you soon bye, bye. How You Doing is a Common Geeking Program production starring Laura Becker and Colin Ketchen with editing and original music by Colin you can learn all about the show at the website podfriend.pizza it has everything you need to listen and to learn about the pod friends themselves and it's an easy place for new listeners to jump on board if you enjoy the podcast reviews and ratings are the best way to show it tell a friend share your favorite episodes and remember to subscribe so you don't miss a thing we'll talk to you again the first monday of every month so be sure to stay in touch thanks for listening talk to you soon Haha, I am recording. So not to pre-record an episode here by any means. Charles and I are looking for a place to live on top of everything else. And mm. I'm working with a real estate agent. She just sent me a potential listing that we're going to try to go see tomorrow. Very cool. Now get ready to say all that again. <laughs> oh, I'm recording. You can just stick this in wherever you want. <laughs> That's what she said. Just kidding. Uh, hey, want to clap while you're uh, putting shit in your eyes? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yep, that'd be... Uh, it's my favorite thing to do when I'm putting shit in my eyes. Perfect. <sighs> just stick it anywhere. Okay, uh, so we go to... We're a disaster. Let's just clap it three minutes. Okay. Uh.